Hi everyone, welcome back. Today on my channel, we're going to be doing an easy apple coffee cake, and it's out of this Betty Crocker cookbook. It's gonna be the dough starter in my bread machine, which is a Cuisinart compact bread maker, and I will link that in the description box below. You can get that off Amazon. And also, I wanted to show you this new little glass measuring cup I got too, and you can use it in the microwave, and I'm gonna look it up, I forget what kind of glass it is, but it's the glass that's supposed to be better so it doesn't break easy. And I'll link that in the description box below too. So if you are new here, my name is Debbie. I'm glad to have you stop in. And I would be really happy if you'd hit the subscribe button. And give me that thumbs up. Right before you start watching the video, just hit that thumb up. It really helps me. And hit the bell icon so you're notified of every video I upload. Now let's get into making this easy apple coffee cake. Okay, so the first thing to your pan you want to add is two-thirds cup of water. And this is the little measuring cup I'm talking about I just got. And it's got like more of a V-spout that makes it easier pouring. And it's Acres. I think that's the brand name of it. And it is made of, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, it's made of borosilicate glass. And it says it's, it's um, microwavable safe. And it, it says probably not to put it in the dishwasher. And I've learned from my other measuring cups, even the glass ones, the Pyrex, these start to fade over time. So I just hand wash mine. But anyway, I will link that in the description box along with my bread maker. So this is two thirds cup of water. Then we're gonna be adding three tablespoons of softened butter. I've just been wanting something, you know, apples and our apples are getting really plentiful around where I live. It's apple picking time. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of salt. I just love these. These are all just like magnetized. These are the Cuisinart brand. You can't lose them in your drawer that way. They're all together. So there's your teaspoon of salt. Then we're going to be adding three tablespoons of sugar. This cookbook, I just love it. It's got these beautiful pictures of what your recipe is supposed to end up looking like. I just love that. It's got little illustrations. This one has illustrations of how to cut the sides. If you watch my other video on what was it, what kind of Danish did I make? But I will insert the name right here. But if you go back and look on that video, I wasn't sure how to do the, the cutting like it was, it was telling me to do. But look at this book. These are just beautiful pictures. And right here is an illustration on how to cut it. And that is exactly probably what I was supposed to do to the other one. And I just didn't know. But look at all these beautiful pictures that they have in here. So I might, I might try to find that book for you too and link it in the description box below. I will disclose that if you do go through any of my links in the description box, I do make a small commission on anything that you purchase. So I, and I thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Okay, so back to this recipe. We have the water, the butter, the sugar, and the salt. So now we're gonna put in our two cups of bread flour. There is one and two. The yeast is one and a half teaspoons. There's our one and a half. Um, so we're gonna be putting this in our bread machine now and we're gonna be using the dough cycle. Pull over our bread machine. And I really like this bread machine. It's easy to use. It's got a lot of functions on it. And it's called compact. And it really is. It's pretty narrow through here. It'll fit really nice in a cabinet. And it's just not a real huge big machine. But it still makes up to a two pound loaf. So let's start this on the dough cycle. Which is number eight. 
and that's an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, it just went off. Unplug it. Mm, I love the smell of dough. So let's dump it out. Get the paddle out. And we're just going to sit it here and let it rest for about 10 minutes, okay? I'm going to cover it so it doesn't dry out. Let it rest. Okay, my timer went off. It's rested 10 minutes. So now we're going to roll this out into a 13 by 8 inch rectangle. And I have taped some parchment paper to the counter. So let's get this rolled out into a 8 by 13 inch. And I'm hoping my parchment paper stays on the counter. I did tape it. And I have my pan ready. This is actually a 9 by 14, so it's almost just eyeballing that to make it that size. I think we're about there. So that's about the bigness of my pan. It can't go any bigger, right? Okay, so it's saying then put it on the cookie sheet. I'm going to cut this to get it on my cookie sheet. Wow, that was simple, huh? Take that away so you can see what I'm doing. Cut this so it fits my pan a little bit better. It's actually a little bit over my pan, but it'll be all right. We'll get it to where it needs to be. How about that? Does that look like a pretty good rectangle? Okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm not using fresh apples. I know I talked about the apples being ready around me, but this is um, an easy, easier way to do it. We're going to use apple pie filling. So we're going to use a cup of apple pie filling about, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually take some of these out of here because they're big chunked apples. So I'm going to take some out of here and I'm going to give them a rough chop. Ooh, this is hot. I just got this out of the dishwasher. I don't know if I can hold on to that. I think that's good. And that baby is hot. I'm also going to add some cinnamon. It doesn't say that, but I'm going to add cinnamon. These have a little cinnamon on it. It says in the can, in the ingredients. But I don't think you can really even smell any, let alone see any. So I'm not sure you can taste any. So I'm going to add some. If you hear my grandson in the background, he's here playing a game. He's, I think he's singing right now. <laughs> so it said a cup. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. Cup doesn't look like very much to me. I could go a little bit more, but, and I think I will, but let's get these on here first. It says pour it down the center. I don't know. A cup might be enough. It's pretty close. I think I'm going to cut some more and add some more. It's, it's an apple coffee cake. You want to taste the apple, right? Yes, I do. I want to taste the apple. Let's speed this process up a little bit. I'm going to get some of this gooey stuff. This is good stuff. Get the goo. I actually have left two chunks of apple in here, so I'm going to use the can. This stuff is good, though, just to eat. I have done that before. You just eat it. So we have our apples down the middle. We've added some cinnamon. Now let me look. What else are we going to do? It has hundreds of recipes for your bread machine in here. I love it. It says one inch intervals from the filling 
all the way to the edge. Let me bring you a little closer. Okay, so approximately one inch strips, it says. Yes, you'll have to find on my uh, channel the cream cheese peach danish I made. It turned out really delicious too. It really did. But as you can see, I didn't know, I didn't understand what it was talking about um, when it said to cut. I didn't understand it, but we do now. Yeah, this should be up here. Okay. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Isn't that the old saying? My mom used to say that to me. Don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> so you do better than me. I think that's what that means, right? You learn from my mistakes. And they start from this end. And they bring it over like that. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to pinch the ends. Pinch it. Pinch, pinch, pinch. We're going to tuck that little guy's rear end up. <laughs> and then we're going to start with our braids. And you just pull over and pinch together. They're showing it. And what do I say about my recipes sometimes? They're not always a looker, but they usually taste pretty good. We're going to hold out hope that it does taste delicious. It's supposed to be a pretty crisscross, but I don't think mine's going to look like that. So we're going to pinch the end together here. So we don't lose any of our goodness, hopefully. That's what ours is going to look like. Okay, so now we're going to cover this and put it in a warm place for about 30 to 45 minutes. I had it set for about 40 minutes. So there she is. I think before I add... I'm going to put her in the oven, which it's 375 degrees. I'm going to add a little uh, cinnamon and sugar on the top. And then after it comes out, I'm going to add my just a touch of powdered sugar all over it, I think. But I'm going to add some cinnamon sugar on the top. So we're going to put her into bake, 375 for 30 to 35 minutes. Okay, it just came out and it smells really delicious. I don't think it looks too bad. The design, do you? No, I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to put some powdered sugar on. Sprinkle that on. Oh, it looks so pretty. Reminds me of the snow falling. Remember last winter when it snowed, the really big snowflakes? I have that on one of my videos. It was beautiful. I think it was on one of my shorts. You'll have to go find that on one of my shorts. It was beautiful. So we're going to let that sit for just a minute. I'm going to slice me a piece, and I'll be back to tell you how it tastes. Okay, here we go. It smells delicious. You can see the apple in there. Mmm. 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 Tastes like fall. Really good. The dough is a little chewy. 
I like it. And I'm really glad I added that cinnamon to the filling. Definitely add the cinnamon to the filling. And add that sprinkle of cinnamon sugar on the top too. That was really good. Mm. And mine's warm. It's delicious. So I hope you tried this recipe. And if you did, tell me if you tweaked it anyway. Added different spices or something different. Let me know. And until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Bye.